Well, hello, guys, and welcome to day three, day number three of Virtual Vacation Bible School. I've got this with Jesus. Awesome. So excited to be sharing uh, this lesson, this third lesson with you called Hard Work. Awesome. Looking forward to this lesson. We're going to be talking a little bit about a guy named Nehemiah in the Bible. I'm sure and you know different people that may have the name Nehemiah. This time we're going to talk about a biblical character, a character in the Bible named Nehemiah. So definitely excited about this lesson today. Again, by this time, um, hopefully you've watched the first video that dealt with determination, the second video that dealt with obedience, and then again, like we said, today's video is going to deal with hard work. Remember, on Thursday, we're going to have our live uh, Zoom session virtually. More information about the meeting ID and all of that will be coming out soon um, so that you can join us live. Definitely want to join us. So on Thursday, it will be a live Zoom session at 6 p.m. Um, and you'll be able to join us. It's the same login information that you would use for our elementary sessions before. So again, this is our virtual uh, Vacation Bible School for elementary. Again, our theme for Vacation Bible School, I've got this with Jesus. All week we've been uh, wearing our t-shirts and everything uh, that represent that theme as well. So again, like I said, this lesson here is dealing with hard work. Working hard now pays off later. Working hard now pays off later. We're going to be taking a look at a man named Nehemiah again. So we'll be looking at the book of Nehemiah. And so we'll take a look at that in a moment. But before we do that, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer uh, before we get started with our lesson. God, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this lesson that we're, we're going to learn about hard work. Uh, we've learned about determination. We've learned about obedience in your word, in, in different scriptures. And now, God, hard work. Please help us to understand what it is that you want to speak to us through your word as we walk through it today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so you can see it on your screen there. Again, this is the book. Remember, if you want either electronic copy of this book or physical copy, please let us know so that we can go ahead or let your parents know so that they can let us know so that we can go ahead and get it to you. Now, we do have copies of the book, so um, we, we definitely can make sure that we get that out to you. And so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our lesson today. All right, so um, again, we're looking at the, our, our message for today, dealing with hard work. As I mentioned earlier, working hard now pays off later. One of the cool things is if you, you are able to get the book, if you remember this within um, Sunday school, the material usually always has a story uh, a modern day story to tie into the Bible story that we're reading. And that's, that's one of the things besides many activities that you would get from the book as well. Crosswords and everything that ties into the lesson. So again, um, just let your parents or guardians know so that we can get you a copy either electronically or physically get you a copy of this book, the student guide. That's what we're talking about. All right. So Nehemiah, hard work, working hard now, Pays off later. Let's go ahead and take a look at where our scripture is at. All right, so you guys know what time it is. So each day, once again, even though the scripture is on the page, I think it is a great practice to get your Bible so that you are familiar with where the different scriptures are within your Bible. I think that is very important. Again, you know, you can always use, I mean, people use phones, uh, people may use, you know, tablets or or iPads, or even use a computer. And I tell you, for me personally, I feel like there's nothing like being able to open up your Bible, especially when you're at home, and and uh, or even in you know a, a Sunday school lesson or whatever the case may be. But since you may be at home right now, it's nothing like opening up that Bible and going to find where that scripture is. You know, looking through that scripture. And so, the big book of Nehemiah is one that. You often sometimes you don't hear too many lessons from. So I think this is a really good one um, to see, you know, where the scripture is in the Bible. So throughout this week, 
uh, we started in the book of Luke when we were talking about termination. Luke 19 was talking about Zacchaeus. And then uh, the next video that we did, we were talking about obedience and we were looking at the book of Joshua. Yeah. And so we talked about Joshua's in the Old Testament, which is, the, you know, part of the first five books or, you know, as you're kind of moving into those first few books of the Bible. Now the book of Nehemiah, um, and you can always look at your table of contents if you want to in your Bible to find where Nehemiah is at, or you can get to it several different ways. So the other day or last, the last session, we finished that the book of Joshua. So if you're kind of going from Joshua and you go to the next book, which is Judges, and then you start getting into 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, then you get into Kings, then you get into the book of Chronicles, and then you head into your next book. I'm actually flipping through these now. The next book after that is Ezra, and then you hit Nehemiah. And so I always think, uh, you know, Nehemiah is not too far away from the book of Psalms you know, going to that direction. But if you're looking backwards, it's near Kings and Chronicles and everything. So the book of Nehemiah. But again, remember, you can always look at the table of contents so you can find it. And so what we're looking at, uh, the book of Nehemiah, there's a lot of parts in here. I'm not going to read all the way through, um, but I do want to read some part of this so that we understand the story. And so let's just look at Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. So just Nehemiah chapter 1. Verse three and four. And it says, and they said to me, the remnant there in the province who escaped exile are in great trouble and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. It says, when I heard this, I sat down and I wept and I mourned for days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And so remember Nehemiah. So of course he's from Jerusalem. He's part of the Israelites. And at this point, you know, just kind of to summarize this, you know, the Israelites, they had been in bondage or in captivity for about 70 years. So that means that they had been scattered, they, they had been taken away from Jerusalem. Now, if you remember, we were just talking about Joshua, right? Joshua, he led the children of Israel to the walls of Jericho. The walls of Jericho came down. Now, all of that, Joshua was before Nehemiah. So, I mean, think about how they conquered the land and they you know, they conquered other places. Now they find themselves being conquered. Now Jerusalem, which was the, the place that their city where they were living at, had been destroyed. It says that the walls of Jerusalem were torn down, or the gates had been torn down, and things have been burned. Remember I talked about how Jericho was a large city with walls up. Walls were meant to protect the city. From enemies from the outside. So what do you think would happen if there's no walls? What would happen if they had this beautiful city, but it had no walls? I mean, just people can just come right on in, take whatever they want. And that's what happened, destroy the city. And so it's been about 70 years that the, the children of Israel, they have been taken out of Jerusalem, taken away from Jerusalem. They had been in what we would call like Babylon and just scattered. And so now Nehemiah, is really having a problem because that's, that's, that's where he's from. And that's his heart. He cares about that, right? And there are still some people that, that live in that area, but, but, but there, there's not enough people to protect the area. And a lot of bad stuff is really happening. And so ne Nehemiah is really bothered by it. And so what he does is he's, he wants to go build, rebuild Jerusalem, rebuild the walls, build it back the way it needed to be. And so this is where it talks about hard work. Working hard now pays off later. So as we continue to look at the scripture, um, there, there's a lot in here, but it, you know we're kind of jumping around a little bit. In Nehemiah chapter four, again, we're not going to read all the way through all of this, um, but I just kind of want to walk through it and kind of paraphrase it. So Nehemiah comes to Jerusalem, and he's saying, "Hey, we're going to rebuild these walls." He, you know, he gets people to help him and. And, and to get help him get some supplies, but you know what happens? The people in the in the neighboring cities, the people in cities that were near Jerusalem, started saying in so many words, "We're not going to let you do it." And they started in 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 so many words attacking 
the people that were working with Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And so now there's this threat that if you keep trying to rebuild those walls, we're going to come after you and, you know, destroy you. And so now Nehemiah had to make sure that they could protect the city that they were trying to rebuild, as well as the people that were working with them to rebuild the city. And they did that. Just think about this. Nehemiah could have got frustrated and said, you know what? Forget it. Because Nehemiah had a very interesting job. So even though he was not in Jerusalem, he was in another place because he was also captive. He was in another, uh, another completely different area serving an, a, another king, a king. And he was the king's cupbearer. So I want you to think about this. Every time the king would drink something or get ready to drink something, a cupbearer would taste it to make sure it was good first. Now, if something was bad with that drink, something bad would happen to that cupbearer. But his main job was to taste it to make sure that whatever the king was about to drink was going to taste good. And so that means that he was right next to the king. He had a very important position. Him and the king was very close. But Nehemiah decided, I want to leave that, and I need to go back to my home to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he gets there again, and he's faced with all of this different opposition. He could have gave up. But like we're talking about, hard work. Working hard now pays off later. So as you can imagine, they were successful. Despite the opposition and everything else, they were successful in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, but it was not without hard work. So here's my question to you. What is it that, you know, you know that you need to work hard on? And sometimes you feel the opposition. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it, you know? Sometimes uh, you just, you may want to feel lazy and we're going to do a little activity that deals with that in a moment. You know, but have you ever felt that way, uh, that you don't want to do something, uh, that you, you know, you can either work hard or you can feel lazy about it? Remember, again, working hard now pays off later. Maybe it's schoolwork. And maybe you're getting ready for the school year. Work hard. Maybe you start off the school year working real hard. And then as the school year goes along, you're kind of slacking off a little bit, you know? work hard. Working hard now will pay off later. So let's take a look at some other things. So I know I didn't tell you to go get your Bible. Forgot to mention that part. So hopefully you pause the video so that you can go ahead and get your Bible. Let's look through this lesson a little bit. All right. So we have a few uh, different things, but I want to ask you to do a quick little uh, activity before we get into this. And if you need to pause the video to be able to do this, um, definitely. I want you to get a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, right? So if you need to pause the video right now to be able to do that, go ahead and do that. But get a piece of paper, nice sheet of paper and either a pencil or a pen. So if you need to pause the video to go ahead and get that, those things, go ahead and do that now. All right, so hopefully you have your pencil and your paper. If you don't, pause the video, go get it, and come back and play the video so that we can do this. All right, so what I want you to do is write the word hard worker. So you're going to divide your paper in half. So if you want to, you can just draw a line right in the middle of the paper. On one side, I want you to write hard worker. And on the other side, I want you to write lazy person. So on one side at the top, hard worker. Other side at the top, lazy person. All right? I give you a moment to go ahead and write that down. So again, you can put a line down the middle. All right. So what I want you to do, and, and you know, we can think about this a little bit, and you can finish this activity a little bit later. But I want you to write down some characteristics, some behaviors, right? Some attitudes. What are some characteristics of hard workers? What are some characteristics of lazy a lazy person? Again, characteristic, some behavior. You know of a hard worker and a lazy person. So go ahead if you, you need to, go ahead and pause the video at this point and write those things down, all right? Hard worker, characteristics or behaviors, right? What, what are they like? What is that person like? And then a lazy person. 
what is that person like? So go ahead and pause the video, write those things down, and then uh, we'll continue on. All right. So hopefully you paused the video, you had a chance to write down some things, you have it written down. So one of the things that we're gonna do is when you join us on our Thursday session, when you join us on our live Zoom session, these are some of the things that you know I'm gonna ask you, all right, what did you write down on your paper? So make sure you're completing these different activities. All right, so let's uh, continue on and take a look at this. So we're look, look at this, this activity that we have on your page here. This is take the lead part one, all right? Think about this, we're talking about Nehemiah. What was the most consistent part of Nehemiah's life and the key to his success? Now, and I know we didn't read all through all those different verses of scripture. If you think about it for a moment, we're gonna find it out by doing this little activity here. Like, what was the, what was the most consistent part? We know he is a hard worker and everything, but there's something very consistent in relation to his relationship with God that he consistently did. And it was a key part of his life and really was the reason why he was so successful. So let's see if we can find out what that is. All right, so let's walk through this activity. We're looking underneath again, take the lead part one. All right, to find out, answer the clues below and write the correct letter in the blank. The first one says, this letter comes after O. <laughs> so what letter comes after O? You can shout it out if you want to, even though I can't hear you, but you can shout it out. All right, you got that? So what letter comes after O? All right, the letter P comes after O, right? All right, so you can do this on your piece of paper if you want to, because again, you don't have the student guide in front of you. Um, but the letter P comes after O, that was pretty simple. So we would put the letter P. So if you have your blank piece of paper, maybe you can flip it over and you write the letter P. We're trying to come up with a, a word here that ties into the most consistent thing that Nehemiah did and the reason why he was so successful. All right, so the next thing says, this letter comes before S. So, you know, your alphabet, and actually it's right across the top there. What letter comes before the letter S? All right, so of course the letter R comes before S. All right, so go ahead. So now on your paper, you should have P R. You might have an idea of what letter we're spelling already, but let's keep going. All right, this letter is the third letter before D. So we got D, and it's the third letter before D. What is the third letter before D? What do you think? Yep, so if you said the letter A, the letter A, you are correct. So now on your paper, you should have P R A. All right, the next one. This is the fifth letter after T. All right, so the fifth letter after T. What letter is that? All right, did you say Y? Yep, Y is correct. So now you should have part of the word, which is a word. So you should have P-R-A-Y, which is what? Yep, which is pray, all right? So you should have pray, but we're not done yet. We still have two more letters that we need, all right? This letter is two letters before G. Two letters before G, what letter is that? All right, did you say E? E is correct. So two letters before G is E. So now we've got P-R-A-Y-E. All right, our last one. This is the 18th letter of the alphabet. What is the 18th letter of the alphabet? All right, did you say R? R is correct. So our word is what? Prayer. Our word is prayer. So going back to the question in the beginning, what was the most consistent part of Nehemiah's life and the key to his success was prayer. So here it is. So if there's something that you're working hard on, again, schoolwork, whatever it is, sports, whatever it is, maybe it's something about your character or behavior, something that you want to be stronger at, whatever it is, do not forget prayer. Pray to God. Nehemiah prayed to God, asking him for wisdom, asking him for you know, the supplies that he would need, asking him to protect them. He was seeking God so that he could get done what needed to get done. 
So don't exclude prayer. Awesome. Awesome. So looking at this, and we're going to continue down and look at this next activity again. So we just talked about it. Nehemiah, where it says, take the lead, part two. He was a man of prayer. He, was, he had a plan and an attitude to persevere. And persevere means it's almost like determination. Pushing through, sticking with it, not giving up is persevering. Okay. Um, and so we're not going to walk through this activity, but I did just kind of want to uh, show you some of these different things here. But something key about Nehemiah was his prayer, plan, three things, prayer, plan, and persevere. This is important. Prayer includes God in what you're doing. Plan, make sure that you, you have direction or, or plan. How do I plan to improve my grades in school? How do I plan to get better in sports? How do I plan to get better at that game? Whatever it is, you gotta have a plan. A plan keeps you focused. But then you can have prayer, you can have plan, but not have persevere or not have that desire to keep going, to keep working hard. If you don't have perseverance, or perse if you're not persevering, the prayer that you've done, and the planning you've done goes to waste because you just stop. And so remember, work hard. Again, what, what was the thing? Working hard now pays off later. Always remember, there's something else that you're striving for. All right? All right. So I think a great lesson. Again, Nehemiah, an amazing uh, man. Really, he, he ended up in the position of almost like a governor. So if you can think of a governor of a state, that's the position that Nehemiah really ended up in. Um, and that's how, because of his hard work and his perseverance uh, and his prayer and having a plan to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Amazing story, awesome story. All right, so let's go ahead and pray and, and, uh, and then we'll share a little bit more and then we'll go ahead and wrap up today. So you see the prayer that's on your screen here. You can go ahead and read this prayer with me. Ready, begin. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to work with all our might as if we were working for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love that. Do everything you do in life as if you're doing it for God. Because the reality is, you are doing it for God. You're doing it because you love God, right? God loves us. And everything that you're doing in life, you can just keep that end goal in mind. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing this? Why am I studying harder? Why am I working harder? Because I want better results. So therefore, um, but don't forget to include God in that. Wonderful story. Certainly enjoy uh, the book of Nehemiah. But again, remember, working hard now pays off later. Awesome. All right, so as we have done the, with the last few videos, as we have said, you know, one of the most important things, in, including God in our life, is, you know, him being our Lord and Savior. What better way, if you haven't done this, to have God help you than to say, you know what, God, I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. And maybe you're watching this video. Maybe this is the first time you're watching this video. So you've never watched it before. You know? And we have what's called the ABCs of salvation. And we're going to take a look at that. But maybe you're saying, well, you know, I, I, I don't have a relationship with God. I've never asked Jesus into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. That's what we want to walk through today. And so what are the ABCs of salvation? Number one, we want to ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins. You know, sin, and we talked about obedience last time, you know, disobedience. Sins in there, in that makeup of disobedience, sin separates us from God. Remember, I talked about the first one, the book of Luke, as part of the Gospels, which means the good news. Remember, I talked about that. We were separated from God. Then Jesus came to bring us back into relationship with God. And so the first step of, of you know, salvation or, or, or receiving Jesus into our life as our Lord and Savior is, number one, asking Jesus, please forgive me 
of my sins. And number two is believing that Jesus died on the cross for us and that he was also raised from the dead for us. And then the last one is call on Jesus to save us. And so that's it, the ABCs of salvation. Ask, believe, and then call on Jesus. And so maybe, you know, in your life, you've never prayed a specific prayer of asking Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. That's what I want to walk you through today. So if you've never done it before, or maybe you're just saying, hey, I just want to pray this prayer again, I invite you to do so. So let's go ahead and do that now. Dear God, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and that he was raised from the dead for me. I ask you now to save me, come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Amazing. If you pray that for the first time, you may want to go and actually please tell your parents and guardians, I just prayed a prayer of salvation, of asking Jesus to come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. Let them know this is a moment of celebration if you've done this for the first time. The key is that we believe it in our heart. That's what the Bible says. We believe in our heart, we say it with our mouth. Yeah, and that's how we receive Jesus into our life as our Lord and Savior. And so you can let us know. So maybe on our Thursday live session on Zoom, you can say, I prayed the prayer. <laughs> now what do I do? You know, but we can help you with that as well. And so what we do have, and, and this is an amazing um, uh, resource that we do have available as part of our Vacation Bible School. Again, I talked about this, the ABCs of salvation. It's just a, a, a small four-page uh, guide, uh, information, that will help you understand what it means to be saved in this in salvation, the prayer of salvation. Why did I need to be saved? And why do I need Jesus in my life as my Lord and Savior? And so the ABCs of salvation, how can I be born again? How can I be saved? You know, how can I be in a relationship with God? And so if you want this, please let us know. We can try to mail it to you, get it to you. However it is, we can certainly get this to you so that you'll have it. So please let your parents or guardians know uh, so that we can certainly get that to you. What an amazing time this has been. And so if this is the first video that you've watched, please make sure that you go back and watch day one and day two so it can kind of tie on in together. And then when we come together on Thursday for our Zoom session, you'll know all of what we're talking about. So again, day one, we talked about what? That's right. We talked about determination. On day two, we talked about obedience. Day three, which is today, <laughs> we talked about hard work. And on our virtual Zoom session, live Zoom session, we'll talk about leadership, but we'll also kind of bring everything together. Awesome. All right, well, what we've done uh, at the end of each session, uh, again, you don't have to uh, stay on and, and watch the, this session, if, uh, the video, if you don't want to but it's the live music video that ties into our Vacation Bible School theme for this year, which is, I've got this with Jesus. Awesome. So thank you guys for joining our video today. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Thursday, on our live session. Get with your parents and guardians so you can get the meeting ID for the live Zoom session, and we will see you then. Awesome. Okay, baby, we're here. Now, I know this is a new school and all, but remember, God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? Yes, Dad, I know, but I just don't know anybody here, and I want to make a difference for Christ. I do, but I just don't know if I can. Oh, baby, just remember, in Jesus, you got this. Okay, Dad, if you say so. In the Bible, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Then if God said it, I have to believe it. That means in Jesus, we got this, we got this, we got this. So what happens if a bully comes to confront me? Man, in Jesus, you got this. Okay, so what if it seems like I just don't fit in? Man, I told you, in Jesus.
Jesus. We got this. Here we go, y'all. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Ever been in a situation you said you just can't win? The enemy harassing me, I need me a super friend. Didn't he realize Jesus was there all alone? Now you got the power to do all things, cause he makes you strong. Yo, take a look in your Bible. You see who the sun sets free is free indeed. But take heed, the enemy will still try to foul you out when you shoot your three. The game is on the line, you're out of time. You take the shot and you think you missed, but it's your time to shine from the line. It's just in time with the assist. With Jesus, there's absolutely nothing you cannot do. You cannot do. Because every hour, your superpower is the greater one inside of you. Now rise up and take this amazing message all around the world. You agree. Because, you know, after all, with great power comes great responsibility. Every step I take, let's go, let's go. Okay, so how was your day? You were right, Dad. It was great. Because with Jesus, we both got this.